One summer's day, Thomas and Percy were idling in the station when Bertie the bus arrived. Have you noticed something, said Bertie? What sort of something? Sir Topham Hatt. He, well, seems different, replied Bertie. I did see him staring at the clouds this morning, said Percy. I wonder why. The reason was simple. It was Lady Hatt's birthday, and Sir Topham had a new outfit. It's perfect for my birthday party, said his wife. You'll look splendid, Topham, dear. And I'll wear my finest hat just for you, he replied. Your birthday is a great occasion. It is, so don't be late. Don't worry, my dear. I shall be spick and span and right on time. Later that day, Sir Topham Hatt had changed into his new suit. You look fine, sir, said the station master. You'd best be going. Indeed, agreed Sir Topham Hatt. The engines are busy. I'll take the car. Is it reliable, asked the station master. Certainly, said Sir Topham Hatt. But it wasn't. <laughs> As he sped along, he suddenly saw a large hole in the road. He braked hard, but it was too late. Bother! Now I've got a puncture. If I change my wheel, I am sure to dirty my suit and that would never do. Just then he heard Caroline. I have to attend my wife's birthday party and I cannot be late. Please give me a lift. I'll try, sir. But Caroline didn't like going fast. I'm hot! My engine will overheat! And it did. Told you so, said Caroline sadly. Bother! Bother! Then he heard a loud whistle. It was George the steamroller. George was cross when he saw Caroline. Call yourself a car? You're a disgrace to the road. Find yourself a scrapyard. Caroline spluttered in fury. George's driver was more polite. Can I be of assistance, sir? Only if you can get me to my wife's birthday party, sighed Sir Topham Hatt. We can take you to Thomas, replied the driver. He's just down the line. Much obliged. And they rumbled away. What about me? wailed Caroline. I'll send for help, called Sir Topham Hatt. Stay there. That's all I can do. George was enjoying rolling along the lane, but not Sir Topham Hatt. Oil splashed everywhere. Worse was to follow. Help! cried George. Something snapped. He veered out of control, and Sir Topham Hatt landed in a muddy ditch close to where Thomas was taking on water. Bother! Bother! Thomas had never seen Sir Topham Hatt in such a mess. Can I help you, sir? asked Thomas's driver. Yes, please. Get me to the station as fast as you can. I'm afraid our fireman's taken ill. Then I'll be your fireman, sighed Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas was excited. Sir Topham Hatt had to work hard. Coal dust and smut flew everywhere. At last, they reached the station. Sir Topham Hatt looked at the clock. Just in time, he gasped. He hurriedly picked up a huge bunch of flowers. Good luck, called Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt's wife was waiting for him. As the clock struck three, there stood Sir Topham Hatt. Tired, but triumphant, he gave his wife the flowers. Well, thank you, my dear. I knew this was my special birthday party, but I didn't know it was fancy dress. Everyone laughed. And then the party began. <laughs> <laughs>